Hey, it's Dave. And uh, out of my favorite place, no doubt, uh, property, and uh, sitting on the shooting bench, getting ready to, I'm getting ready to get my muzzle loaders um, ready for uh, muzzle loading season, which is first week in November. So I got uh, my CVA Wolf and um, CVA Optima. So the Wolf's up first. I put a brand new scope on it this year. So I have the target set up at 25 yards. And I don't have a camera on it because I'm not sure where it's going to go. So, the, you know, I don't want to hit the camera. Um, so anyways, we're going to um, shoot a couple downrange and see how good we are in 25 yards and before we go down to 50. But let me walk through this a little bit. So I'm going to turn you around here. Hold on a minute. All right, so what you got here? So it's a CVA Wolf. It's actually a Wolf Magnum in that it'll shoot up to 150 grains. And um, it's got a um, Nikon scope on it that we just put on, or I just put on. So we'll see how that goes. This is a really old, it's an old rifle. So it doesn't have the quick release breech or anything, but it is, it does have a break so you can remove the breech plug um, to assist in cleaning that and such. So um, I spent a little time at home making sure it's all clean, but run through the stuff you gotta have real quick. So <clears throat> the way this works, it is, you load it by the muzzle. So you need some kind of propellant and I use, I use, I've always used triple seven. That's because a friend of mine told me, Ron said, use triple seven. That's what I've always used. And so um, it's always worked for me, never had a problem. I've tried a lot of different, <laughs> a lot of different um, bullets. The, I always come back to this. It's the 240 grain. Um, it's got a sabat on it and it's a, uh, you know, hollow point. And, um, for whatever reason, my two guns just shoot that much more accurate than anything else I've ever tried. So, and I always shoot with a hundred, hundred grains of powder. And so let me show you the powder comes in little pellets like this. See, so you get two pellets, each pellets 50 grains. And so you put two in, into your barrel, you put your bullet, which looks like that. Uh, into your sabat. So the first thing in the bullet in the barrel is going to be those two. Then the bullet with the sabat on. And then I use the ramrod. Well, actually, I use this tool, push starter. First, get it started into the barrel, and then um, and then you use the ramrod, which is this part that comes out. You can see mine's been well used. So it comes out and you use it to push down on it so, and push it in the barrel. So, and once you get it seated, the powder and bullet firmly in, and then you put in at the end a cap, primer cap. So, um, and this is a 209 primer and I usually use either Winchester or uh, Remington. Now, the way I have found best success is I'll load it, shoot once, reload, shoot twice, and then after that, usually I'm not very accurate. The barrel will get too much build up and you kind of start to lose your accuracy. So I'll stop then and run a couple patches of, with cleaner. So I use a CVA solvent, barrel solvent, well, it's actually barrel blaster solvent. And then after I've run a couple patches through, I'll put a patch of boar butter. And it just, that first shot you get after a little bit of boar butter in there is just, seems much more accurate. So anyway, you can see the target down there. I'm gonna set you over here so you can. All right, so I have no, I have no primer cap in it. Now it's empty because I just cleaned it. The 
There's a couple big mistakes you can make with a muzzle loader. One of the biggest is to load it, put a put your pellets and your sabat and bullet in, and then put another set on top of it. And that'll keep that is not a good situation. It'll jam the barrel. And you usually get an explosion. So alright, so you drop the pellets, they just drop right in. Then I got my bullet in the sabat. And then I take my pusher just to get it started. And then start my ramrod. And then you just want to push it down. You want you feel that last little push, and you know it's set pretty good. Um, for me, can also check it with my ramrod. I know that I'm about even when I have 100 grains of powder in there. So, anyways, I know I got the right load in. Now, in Virginia and in Tennessee, this is still not a loaded weapon. It doesn't get loaded until you put the primer on. So, to do that, you literally just pop it open. That's what this little lever down here is for to open up the breech and let's see, let's see but there is and I'm not I'm not sure if you'll see in this but hopefully you are there is a breech plug and it's got a little hole in it and the primer fits right inside of that and so then you close it up still can't fire yet because I haven't cocked the hammer so we're gonna set that there put my ears in Move all this out of the way and give her a shot down range and see where we end up. First time with the scope. Not really sure how it's going to go. Get comfortable. I love muzzleloader season. It's my favorite by far, and several reasons for it, but the, I just like the concept of shooting a muzzleloader. My friend Ron got me into it, and he was right. It is exciting and fun. It's much more challenging, because a lot of things can go wrong. Your powder can get wet, your primer can't, won't discharge, a lot of stuff. So it's just a, plethora of things that can go wrong. Right picture. I'm going to shoot the second one down. See where we end up. Alrighty. Before we go down there, I'm going to go ahead and run some patches through it, and then it has a chance to dry better while I'm down there messing around with the target and such. So literally, I just Take some solution, wet a patch, run it down the barrel. You want to get the end pretty good. And look, see, you can tell it's really dirty. Run it back through, clean it. Run it one more through, maybe in two. We'll see how this comes out. Or butter on the next one. Let this bad boy dry for a minute. While we take care of our target. So to do the bore butter, I just take my finger, dip a little on my finger, get a little bit on it, put some in the center of the patch, and 
then you know make sure you got some on it not a lot just a little it's enough to help reduce that friction you get and then there we go all right, all right. so do the breech open to see the target way down there <coughs> i'm out of breath 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 i was talking my breath out of breath because i walked back and forth three times 50 yards uphill all downhill one way uphill the other so anyways it doesn't look very steep from here trust me it goes down pretty good so some of the things you got to watch out for besides our double loading however you want to call it is to uh, keep your powder dry, which can be a challenge when it rains. So usually I'll hunt out of a blind if it's raining during muzzle leather season just because of that. My friend Ron, he's got a pretty good setup with his tree climber and he can do it. But me and Robert, we usually get a blinds during the rain. Because <sighs> your primer can get wet and then it's no good. Your powder can get wet. You can put something over the top, like a finger from a glove, that works. The other thing, it's pretty obvious. I don't use, I don't use a bench rest or bench vise to shoot from. And, and I, I'm shooting at 25 yards and then 50. And 50 is where I'll sight it into. And there's a couple reasons for that. So first is, when I'm up in a tree, I, I don't have a bench vise. So I try to simulate to the best I can the shooting conditions. Now I'm shooting off of a bench and stuff. So that's like primal or prime, you know, opportunity, not primal, prime opportunity. And sometimes up in the tree stand, I can shoot off the rail. Sometimes I can turn and I'm shooting off the tree. So those give you good rock steady. Sometimes though, you're just, you're out, you know, and you just gotta do it the old fashioned way, which is what people can do. So uh, anyway, that's why I'm not, I'm not up to the perfection of a bench vise right now. That's, that's more for target shooting. This is getting this ready for hunting. And what I'm looking for, confidence at 50 yards, that bullet on both shots is gonna go where I want it to, within, you know, an inch or two. walk through it so here here is my first second then we adjusted up about two inches and over two so here is three so it's right on and a little over and here's four and it's interesting how I'm consistently getting a little a little better shot on my second one but so split the difference that's that's pretty good from 50 yards I'm within an inch of where I'm aiming pretty confident with that it's in camo it's got a little bit a lot, lot nicer stock to it with the raised cheek and a nice pistol grip um it has uh, what kind of nikon it has a nikon scope on it it is i'll get y'all specs when I post this video, I'll put them all up there so you know all about it. But some things you tell offhand, it has a longer barrel. Um, this used to be Ron's. He gave up on it because the barrel kept foul, fouling. It um, would rust real easy, it still does. It took, it took me four hours of cleaning to get it cleaned and ready to come out here today. So you got to put some work into this thing. I am not sure why it fouls up like that. I've uh, tried pretty much everything on it. And um, 
it sits in a in a in a room where it's climate controlled, meaning there's you know it's around 72 all year round, and the humidity is really controlled. So I'm not sure what the issue is, but this is the one I shot the buck with last year, and so I also use only it is you could, you could put a magnum load in this too, but I only put 100 grains in. And I used the same 240 grain bullet with the uh, Sabat, just like I do for the Wolf. I found that it made this really much more accurate for me. If I used other loads, I found that sometimes I'd have flyers, and more often than not, so, especially when I went up to the Magnum loads. So, anyways, we'll, we'll put a couple down, down range, and you hear me say happy thoughts. When I'm hunting in the tree stand or wherever, I say, aim small, miss small. I took that from the Patriot. So here's my progression. So here's one and two. So that's the ones I split the difference. And you can see it's roughly was two inches out, two inches high but here's my third shot so it actually hit the hole of number four of the previous group and here's my fourth shot which is definitely a flyer all right so i think we're pretty close let's see what we can do these two here's the my first and here is my second. So, let's see. One, two. Not as close as I want to be. Um, I'm going to do it one more time. Take it down one more inch and ever one more and see if we can't get two closer to the center. So one more time. Yeah, let's walk down and see what we got. I think we got two right next to each other, but let's go see. All right, so I lost my camera down here because it got too hot, but so here was one and that's that's good. I'm, I'm real happy with that. There's one, and here is two. So, interesting. Pushing it. For whatever reason, I can't get that second one to, to have the same accuracy as the first. Not even close, really. So, long hot day on October 21st. Sweating up a storm. I don't know what the deal is, what the dealio is. But um, so, wolf, got a high level of confidence on the wolf. Optima, eh, definitely got a high level of confidence on that first shot. And a medium to high on the second. I mean, it's not like the second's off by tons, but you would like it to be closer. So. I'm not sure what the deal is. Maybe it's because of all the fouling on the barrel has finally got to it a little bit. I don't know. So, like I say, remember to be kind. Make kindness your business. Thanks for hanging out with me. Kind of a fun journey getting the nozzle letters ready. Slow process, but that's okay. Sometimes slow is good. And that's what we needed today was a slow process so, i like my rifle range it's good to come out here and do it nobody bugs you so all right dave out